So allow me to uh, share on our, our side of the story naman no? relating to overcoming digital payments because I think being in the uh, e-commerce space for over 12 years I think um uh, hopefully we can we can give a certain level of insight as well no on on uh, on this particular uh, topic okay so let, let, let's get down to the business no and this is going to be uh, fairly quick no so um these are some of the points that we would like to to point out so we want to touch on the state of digital in the philippines which um uh some parts of it was already shared by by asik jean earlier uh the actual challenges and opportunities of digital in the philippines um uh how how essentially how 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 difficult it is especially for those who are actually doing uh me commerce in the philippines no kasi We've been talking about e-commerce the past 12 years, pero a lot of businesses in the Philippines are still doing e-commerce, meaning uh, ikaw lahat pa rin na gumagawa, ikaw na nagbebenta, ikaw pa nag-receive ng payment, ikaw pa nag-CCO din mismo, ikaw pa nag meet up, ikaw pa nag deliver So, um, uh, certain levels are really still uh, um, still being done uh, in a more like a e-commerce uh, 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 way. no. And from from our perspective as, as, as Paynamics, how can we help? And hopefully, you know, um, create, uh, yeah, give you certain level of um, insight and maybe uh, some take uh, takeaway in in the process. So, first, the state of digital in the Philippines. No, so um, no mention na ni, ni Asik kanina. We're out 111 million Filipinos, and um, uh, 70 percent of which are already connected to the internet. And I think a lot of that is either being driven by the popularity of mobile phone usage in the Philippines. And um, also, again, the, the, the ease of access in terms of signing up to social media sites, no? So those are one of the major drivers of internet penetration. And having said that, um, we as businesses, at the end of the day, um, this, as, this actually allows us to be highly competitive. In fact, internet became really more of the greater equalizer uh, in the Philippines because nawala ngayon yung, nawala ngayon yung delineation ng sino yung micro, sino yung small, sino yung may pera, sino yung wala because because of internet, because of e-commerce, anybody can actually compete in the space and directly engage with their respective consumers. No, so that's actually one of the you know, biggest benefits of digitizing the business. And again, we we if 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 we haven't really invested in this particular area, you have to really you know think carefully in terms of your strategy because we have to remember, in the Philippines, we spend the most time online than anybody else in the world. In fact, in average, ten hours and twenty-seven minutes. So. Most of our customers are already online, and again, in fact, more than more than uh, you know, um, practically half of their day is spent on on again scrolling and and browsing and utilizing uh, digital devices in the process. So we really have to invest in in making our our, our digital presence and in, in, in digitizing some some parts of our operations as a business because our customers are already there and waiting to engage. And in terms of the online uh, content activities, I guess one of the other factors why these are the only information, uh, these are the only available activities that we do relating to to content is because um, these are some of the well, these are just some of the things that are, are essentially we can do, no? Because uh, in the in the earlier study made by Google Temasek as well, less than one percent of businesses are actually operating dig digitally or transacting with their customers in digital in the digital uh, digital forms. No, so kaya yung digital uh, yung content activities natin were very limited to looking for uh, looking for uh, product information, doing how to uh, entertainment and even social activity. And um yun nga, some of the popular social media platforms and yeah in the principle of digital marketing uh these are i guess these are the types of channels that we also have to heavily invest in um as organizations no facebook messenger because again that's where we that's where we engage with our you know with, with our audience no so and again uh that's where we spend most of our time now this particular slide i just want to also highlight the, the again in terms of the app ranking in terms of the volume of its active users i just want to also highlight that other than social media uh itself no um filipinos also other than being fueled by entertainment um we became also uh became also highly transactional which actually makes Lazada, Shopee, and even the likes of Gcash uh, really, really one of the more popular apps being heavily utilized among Filipinos. So, medyo mas naging transactional na tayo. Dati kasi, um, there, there's hardly any transaction happening. We, we just go to online to engage and, you know, talk to loved ones and socialize. 
but because of these you know because of these um you know digital uh, uh, because of these developments we're now became uh, highly transactional in the process and in the in, uh, because of the topic at hand as well no uh we also just want to highlight that the use of financial services um about 30 percent of us already are, are quite familiar with online banking already uh, more than 20 percent are already utilizing mobile payment and surprisingly um there's about um there's about 19 percent that already owns a certain level of cryptocurrency no and i guess one of the other factors other than the likes of uh, bitcoin or ethereum i guess one of the other factors that have contribute to owning a crypto i again yung mga um tao dito yung mga uh, play to earn uh, apps like for example axi no uh so parang kumbaga since we're doing gaming anyways it's actually one of the more uh more uh utilized um activity online there and if you are being paid and rather earn um in 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 in, in playing so okay i think one of the factors that kaya naging very popular din siya. and part of uh, part of the financial inclusions that we also have to again appreciate in terms of development and where we are no so um we we have you know we 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 we, we somehow increase our finance uh, account with financial inclusion so although this one i think mas mataas pa yung sta yung mas mataas pa yung numbers na meron si uh si si ASEC kanina no so mas uh, ang maganda diyan mas dumadami na yung nagkakaroon ng uh, bank accounts uh, sa Philippines uh about 25% already have at least made or received electronic forms of payment no hence the likes of popularity of the the GCash PayMaya among other things no um we have over 20 percent uh debit card ownership uh, about nine uh, about nearly 10 percent made the purchase online seven percent does online banking um among other things no so i guess the the, the 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 real highlight here is uh among consumers among 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 filipinos uh, again the consciousness the level of consciousness and confidence are are, are, are now um actually increasing in fact um we uh, based on in, in terms of our transactional behavior no there's now over uh, or rather nearly 50 uh, 50 million um uh, people consuming uh, consumer goods online with actually an average of um 388 annual um uh, revenue per user so um kung kung, kung susumahin natin yeah, so that's nearly 20,000 pesos spread out for for 12 months so yung yung confidence level somehow uh, tumaas no and uh, yun yeah no uh, i guess one of the other factors is uh, many businesses also, uh, and again, we also have to give credit to the likes of the uh, giant marketplaces like Lazada and Shopee because of, you know, heavy promotion of, of the usage of the app, which actually, because again, we're mainly driven by the mobile phones, no? because before, when you want to do e-commerce, the only option that you actually have to uh, invest in is, yeah, parang yung, yung, for example, you have to have a laptop and you have to have at least, or maybe a desktop. Uh, so you can actually launch a browser, but nowadays, because of the popularity of smartphones, um, uh, the smartphones and its apps, no? So, medyo mas, mas naging madali, naging mas accessible siya. And in terms of, again, growth that we mentioned earlier, um, in terms of uh, digital payments, so again, um, over four, uh, about 43 million already making um, um, making digital payments and this actually um, gave 11% um, plus growth, no? From the previous year. And in fact, in terms of volume naman, yung, kumbaga, yung tinatawag na ticket size, um, we nearly hit more than uh, or nearly 40% naman yung change or, or rather growth no, from the previous year, which actually brings us now to nearly $400 uh, dollars in terms of average uh, value that we uh, we actually transact using digital payments uh, per users. Um, so those types of things are we have to, to really appreciate because again, um, as a business, we have to really realize, okay, ano ba yung mga pwede kong digitize in terms of uh, making payments? Because again, um, uh, whenever we actually do things manually or offline, meron mga factors of yung, yung, yung turnaround time, yung, yung service levels, among other things. No? Um, I also just want to highlight also in terms of the mobile actions that we do. Um, so other than scanning QR code, possibly for contact tracing, uh, but you know, um, about f nearly 50% of our population now utilizes mobile phones for scanning QR code. And similarly, for in terms of utilizing mobile payments, about 30% of our population now um, use mobile payments uh, through their phones. So 
allowing me now to, to to move on and transition to challenges and opportunities of digital uh, digital in the Philippines no and maybe specific also the payments maybe um this will reflect also some of your own challenges in dealing with you know with your customers or maybe with your buyers as well um in in the process i guess one of the biggest um emerging trends brought by covid-19 is again the non-contact revolution this actually forced us as even citizens to to really do uh, change the way we do things no for example like um instead na nagfi-fill out ka ng papel uh, for contact tracing scan a QR code uh in base na nagko-commit ka going to work so you can actually work to the office you know telecommuting became really one of the biggest requirement now no uh, be, uh the home uh, became the new office became the new school no and uh, more than anything it also helped us navigate our financial volatility as a country so yung dating yung yung, yung dating um yung yung dating old ways natin of you know uh transacting like, you know uh you know sending a check or you know paying in cash so somehow because of the pandemic it actually you know forced us to navigate the financial volatility hence again the increase of internet online banking uh movement of digital currency and even uh stocks in the process now when we start talking about accepting digital forms of payment based on again uh based on the the study presented by asic gene earlier the more popular option is still actually the cash on delivery no um actually medyo ano pa yun medyo what do you call this medyo uh, conservative pa yung range na binigay no 70 to 80 uh, percent on from from our from our perspective from our perspective um it medyo actually it's still it, it's still somewhere around 80 to 90 percent no um and because of you know particular challenges um cash on delivery yes it's actually one of the more popular choice among consumers because consumers felt empowered they felt in control um of the transaction no because yeah at least i would only have to pay for for that transaction one this actually arrives to my door no but at the end of the day, um, for, for businesses, this is actually one of the major pain points, no? Because you have to track everything. And not only you have to track everything that you're actually sending out, um, there's always that high probability of uh, things getting returned. In fact, there's a recorded um, recorded return rate of about 35%, no? Meaning, nag-dispatch ka ng goods mo, nag-render ka ng service mo, only to, have, only to have that, you know, only to have these types of things returned no about more than 35 percent of the time now cash on delivery does not also um uh, it's not also be being performed uh for free no they also come with cost and in fact i guess one of the one of the other reasons why it's also popular among businesses because if you start comparing the man cost of utilizing digital forms of payment versus to uh, facilitating cod through couriers um medyos medyo mababa yung 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 facilitation fee or collection fee na tinatawag so kaya it's somehow Parang kumbaga, it's a, it's it's biting the bullet naman on the side of the businesses na parang okay rather than you know it, you know this is better than nothing uh, for for lack of better word but then again since these are tangible in nature um this usually takes uh you know takes a while for example settlement takes longer um uh, and kung gusto mo mapabilis naman yung settlement then yung collection fee naman masyadong tataas because you require uh, parang a more real time action from the courier or rather who's facilitating the transaction in the process no so there so cod is again it, it actually attracts really a lot of, of uh, volume of consumers but it's not usually the most uh, merchant friendly or business friendly of the of of all no and when you try to bring down discussion naman to credit cards uh, one of the other uh, pain point that we also have to again um, consider is we have a very low uh, credit card penetration in the Philippines. In fact, it's only ranging based on different studies. Naglalaro lang to ng two to five percent, five percent the most, no, uh, in terms of uh, credit card uh, penetration. Um, and as a merchant, as a business, this also not is the most business friendly of of, of, of most of the choices because. Typically, for you to be able to accept credit cards, you have, you know, you have to pay set up fees, you have to pay uh, maintenance fees, not to mention the high transaction fees, no? Uh, case in point, the most, the most, uh, well, the, the most, the most, or rather the easiest way of accepting credit cards in the Philippines is actually through PayPal, no? Um, you just have to sign up business.paypal.com uh, and you can already sign up as a merchant. However, um, one of the drawbacks naman of, of, you know, of that convenience, quote unquote, PayPal charges 4.4% plus 15 pesos for any tra uh, for every transaction. No, not to mention uh, the potential exposure that uh, any business have because 
um, PayPal, on the other hand, actually has a 180-day dispute period. Um, meaning to say, ang ibig sabihin lang nito is the customer, when they transacted with you, uh, kumbaga, bumili ng pagkain, rendered service, whatever, kumbaga, the customer has 180 days to file a dispute against the transaction, which actually, parang, kumbaga, uh, which actually really challenges the business, na parang, you have to really also do like uh, um, uh, good safekeeping of your uh, customer records, no? For example, in particular, uh, pag, pag china challenge kasi usually mga transactions, you have to provide proof of delivery na that you, you actually indeed uh, fulfill the transaction to the customer in case they actually dispute that. Because otherwise, you'll be subject for a chargeback. So, ibig sabihin lang nito, wala ka nang kinita, nagkaroon ka pa ng cost in, uh, uh, in a form of chargeback. No? So, those are just some of the main issues of dealing with credit cards. No? Um, doon naman sa binabanggit ko kanina na, na e-commerce because again, somehow we, we started to become really more progressive in terms of electronic forms of payment. Um, naging popular choice ang alternative payments. No? Um, uh, para for example, the online bank transfer thanks to the likes of uh, Instapay and Pesonet. Now, you know, uh, regardless of your bank, you can actually make you know, make those transfers um, through through your phone or through your, through your mobile devices. Um, because of also, I guess, um, uh, because of other factors like, for example, issue of trust. No, um, many of our customers, or rather, many of you are also just uh, giving uh, alternative option to to your customers. Na ah, mam pa deposit na lang po or pa pa deposit na lang ng check or papunta na lang uh, to a uh, to a cash remittance uh, channel. No. So, well, there's not, uh, there's, there's nothing really wrong with that. But again, the challenge there is the, 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 the turnaround time because one, you're asking your customer to step out of their uh, current location just to go to like an over-the-counter channel and, you know, line up and make the payment uh, technically online. So that's not necessarily digital in nature, although yes, you, you digitize certain levels of that. But again, that still uh, require hard work and, you know, leg work and you know exposing themselves in the process um one of the other factors of that is the varying convenience fees um understandably uh for example iba yung fee salimbawa ng, ng over the counter deposit versus the cash remittance and usually if you actually look at cash remittance channels like palawan express Cebuana, and M. Lillier, uh sa nila tier pricing for example one peso to 100 pesos piso um 200 to 500 five pesos no and then if you actually start to look naman over the counter deposit there are some banks um still even to date that actually um uh charges like interregion fees no and i don't know if any of you have already experienced that your interregion fees halimbawa lang ang bank account ko ay metro manila tapos somebody from uh antipolo no uh, as an example because rizal is part of calabarzon not metro manila um in some cases um, some banks still tend to charge uh, interagent fees some, uh, ranging from uh, amounts of 50 to 150 pesos. And if these are low value, uh, if these are low value amounts in the process, those are those amounts uh, that interagent fee is very painful, no? Kung baga, ito na nga lang kinita ko, ito na nga lang yung margin ko, tapos et kakainan pa ako ng ganitong kalaking um, interagent fees, no? So, among other things, and not to mention, many of the uh, fraud uh, issues that we've seen uh, over the news. These are these are utilizing alternative modes of payment. Na parang nagpagdeposit, you know, hindi, hindi na makontak, uh, among other things, no. So there's because again the transaction are essentially, um, you know, uh, although for example in this particular case, parang you were in good faith to, to when you actually make that deposit when you actually ma uh, made that remis uh, remittance to. Um, to that to the other party, you know, and again when they fulfill because there's actually no intermediary in the process, it actually parang it really um it, it makes the other uh, party uh, more 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 cautious in the process and again the issue of trust. Um, a similar example, no, I guess the again with the prevailing uh, campaigns of the e wallets like so GCash, I think they grew to now to over like 15 million uh, GCash users. Maya, uh, uh, again, too too good to be second, no, uh, in terms of becoming a unicorn. And again, I think there's somewhere around five to ten million, if I'm not mistaken. Um, it actually started to really democratize among Filipinos. Uh, as citizens, we actually see this as a best alternative to have 
uh, uh, to to a bank account because this actually allowed us anything that we can do plus more no uh, than than uh, than actually uh, possessing a bank account um, and in terms of penetration it's actually very easy because it only requires smartphone and mobile number and uh, a government issued ID and you can actually do a KYC process or you know your customer process to actually to, to actually acquire one and this is again very ideal for for consumers but many businesses still well, many businesses unfortunately utilizes this particularly and this is actually very common among the micro and the small no in receiving uh, digital forms of payment from their customer na parang ay pa ito po yung gcash ko send send na lang and then uh, make a screenshot no it's all and good again it's still it's still e-commerce and still digital payments uh, in a way no but um at the end of the day although it actually provides a, va a, a faster turnaround time uh in, in again uh, in in, uh, in in transferring funds from one person to another because of its accessibility it, this too it actually is very prone to uh, fraud and scams if I'm, and because of again these are uh this is actually a person to person transaction in nature so uh since this is a person to person and there's no intermediary um and since these are not necessarily governed by by any regulator for that matter so parang should should there be any dispute should there any be any issues in the process um since the the nature of the transaction is person to person the the only remedy that could happen is actually by uh uh the the again law enforcement via the cyber crime no because it's actually again it's essentially swindling no so um because of again because of its uh, nature how it's being uh, mainly utilized uh, in in the country uh, today no being a p2b in, in in nature again those are just some of the many challenges that many of businesses are actually encountering especially in dealing uh, or rather accepting digital forms of payment no uh, even the consumer behaviors and in its, its rating activities now in terms of where we're headed naman um some of the emergent trends obviously is i don't know if you already noticed that um philippines is also starting to you know see uh ultimate benefit or great benefits in actually uh setting up uh digital banks no there's been a significant increase uh, uh or a, a number of uh digital banks in the philippines and some of kumbaga from og digital bank in the philippines are the likes of cimb tonic and they're followed by the likes of um go time uh union digital uno bank uh among uh, among many uh others no so again consciousness uh familiarity are ready there among consumers and again it will continue to challenge the 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 the, the again the the fintech ecosystem no particularly with banking no because parang for example when you try to deal with digital banks uh parang many people start to to adopt digital banks is because again for example the um, the interest rates so if i'm if i'm generating for example if if my money is um for example with the digital bank is actually getting like what um four to six percent with a digital bank versus less than one percent with a traditional bank then again parang the, again the logical uh, side of you as a person or uh, again um is you know i'd rather put my money where it can actually earn uh, more interest no or if not for the interest itself again the accessibility because when you go to the more popular traditional banks the line when you go to the atms when you go to the tellers um it's not actually the again there's usually a, a, a long queue no uh just for you to be able to transact no so that's not really very ideal uh one of the other trends as well is the uh, again the adoption of the qr payments it started to become uh, a common practice among e-wallets um in emerging practice among banks and um in fact it's even the likes of bsp who's starting to again spearhead the qrph to actually make sure that you know, parang we can skew away from again the, the tedious process of you know parang um you know sending money to another person if it if can be done in you know, a via um uh, uh again uh, uh, taking again uh, doing a qr scan no then then so be it no say they, they really champion qrph in fact no um one of the bsp aspirations is to make even the likes of yung mga palengke yung public transport is naging qr uh, code system na lang eventually no so that's actually part of the uh some of the things that um you know the likes of bsp want to champion and also as mentioned by Azar Jing earlier um even the government um for example like the dti is even starting to champion uh in promoting uh electronic forms of payment because again there's huge potential there's huge benefit uh, among businesses and even consumers in the process to 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 adopt to digital forms of payment now 
doon na kami papasok no uh, as Paynamics that's where we try to come in as we try to empower as many businesses as we can by offering the most secure efficient and reliable payment solutions to to our to, to our um to again to to many businesses no so uh, as we established in 2010 um prior to prior to 2010 our, our our three founders actually have a collective uh, experience in in payments industry for of over 30 years no so essentially um we wanted to to present ourselves to become the again that that ultim, uh to, to 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 become that uh ultimate solution to any business to actually reduce all of those um pain points that any could actually experience any business uh for for that matter no in dynamics um in in case you have if, if you case you actually wonder we're actually the payment um service provider for uh some of the popular brands that you probably already have shopped from uh from your starbucks card to your lazada and shopee wallets to pure golden sm uh, uh supermarket to your globe to your gcash uh to your uh to your shopee pay to your grab pay um you know uh we are there we're actually on the back end and we actually have over 2000 uh merchant strong no that actually uh that we actually have uh, facilitate payments uh for for their businesses no um for for your appreciation dynamics is actually um uh holds um uh, three major licenses from from our regulator the banco central so obviously for the payment service operator um because of, uh we also have uh, remittance and we also have emi license no so we actually are uh highly supervised and governed by the banco central and again uh our, our core business uh is actually uh, revolving to um uh enabling businesses to accept digital forms of payment so we actually one of the highest uh, we actually have the widest payment processing network and uh unlike any other uh, fintech companies that you may be familiar what what actually sets Paynamics apart is we are one of the most agnostic uh, uh, player in, in in the fintech space because we actually work with everyone as much as possible. So from from your you know from your Visa, Mastercard, credit cards to the over the counter channels and even the uh, mobile wallet, no. So essentially, what we actually try to enable is all of these uh, payment options that you are seeing on the screen. Uh, when you sign up and, and, and sign up for the service of Paynamics, all of these services are already uh, collectively part of your uh, ecosystem. So bottom line, when you start utilizing Paynamics as, as your payment uh, payment service provider, um, your the kind of discussion that you're going to have with your, with your customers is essentially, you know, um, your customers will no longer have any excuse not to be able to pay you as a business. No, so um, any any payment related um, channel, uh, any payment uh, discussion will already out of the window because um, you as a business can take any uh, any payment uh, uh, from from your customer. No, and and again. Um, on the, on the side of uh, of Paynamics, um as a payment gateway one of the one of the one of some of the challenges that we've seen naman is yes you may see us like for example you have over 2000 merchants and based from the logos um, of I, or logo or some of the merchants I, I showed to you earlier most of those are usually the large enterprises if not the regional or global players in terms of doing e-commerce no so one of the common challenges, especially when we're dealing now with, for example, with the medium or large enterprises, when we when we usually send proposals, naman, one of the common uh, common friction that we usually see are again to the similar point I, I raised earlier is when you start when they start seeing like for example set a fees. Now, uh, for you to be able also to integrate a payment processing uh, network like this one, uh, one usual requirement is you have to have a website, no, uh, and that website should have like a, for example an API. To connect with ours so that they can start collecting payments no so those are some of the things that we noticed in the process that ah um we we still see drop offs among businesses uh that's why you know i guess well, part ng sinasabi ni Asik kanina is yung yung readiness itself no as much as as much as many businesses would like to adopt to digital forms of payment they seek they simply can't because either one uh the the the, the infra cost required for that the talent and the technology that they actually have um to maintain and operate no so those are some of the other challenges we see uh personally in in the process and 
And again, coming into the pandemic uh, in, in, in 2020, one of the other things that we also, uh, because of those realizations, it allowed us to actually um, develop products specific to micro and small who actually have those particular pain points. No? And essentially, we created an, actually an electronic monic wallet, hence, again, the EMI license that we hold. Um, but unlike Gcash and Paymaya, that, um, that specifically caters to the consumer market, no? Um, we we try to focus more on the MSME segment of 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 you know of, of the economy. So essentially, we would like to empower um, more businesses, particularly the micro and the small, by providing electronic money wallet uh, that comes with the digital payment acceptance facility. No, and you know just just a uh, just a quick overview. This is what it is. As more and more people stay at home, social media based businesses and online entrepreneurs continue to thrive. However, complex payment methods can keep you from connecting with interested customers. Thankfully, something as simple as accepting payments doesn't have to be so complicated. Introducing Paynamics Biz, an e-money wallet and digital payment acceptance facility tailor-made for forward-thinking entrepreneurs. We offer you a totally cashless payment acceptance facility that's convenient, fast, and secure. We recognize that running your own business can get pretty hectic. With Paynamics Business Online Portal, feel free to check on your business whenever and wherever. Connecting with your customers has never been easier. When it comes to accepting payments, Paynamics Biz supports a wide range of payment options. Owning a business means endless days of jam-packed schedules. This is why we've simplified the payments process for you. Enjoy the fruits of your labor in three easy steps. First, you can either generate transactions through a unique link, or you can print out a static QR code which you can leave out in your store for your customers to use. Next, watch us collect your cashless payments. Finally, transfer your earnings from your Paynamics Biz e-wallet to your bank account. It's that quick and easy it only takes five minutes to register with us and start accepting payments in real time we understand how hard you work to build your wealth which is why we've taken great pains to keep your money secure Paynamics biz carefully complies with the regulations of banco central ng Pilipinas, so you can rest assured that your money is guaranteed safe and sound simplify your process and experience the wonders of going cashless with Paynamics Biz, cashless means business. Remember, keep it simple. Sign up today. Yeah. So essentially, again, Paybiz is uh, a product that we develop as a response to um, trying to equip as many um, businesses as we can. No? And particularly because, again, this economy is driven by 99.5% micro and small uh, medium enterprises. Hence, our, our focus to again try to enable as many businesses as possible through Paybiz, no, which uh, came uh, uh, through an EMI, no, or rather an e-wallet in the process. So, um, at the end of the day, what we uh, what we hope to, to to bring to the table is to actually level up any any businesses um, regardless of your size, no. So, um, we, any any business should be able to accept uh, any forms of business, or rather, can should should be able to accept any digital forms of payment there is, no. And again, to have that certain uh, level of control in managing transactions um, as a business. Now, again, if you are a micro and small that actually are not necessarily like the, the market for the payment gateway that we have, no, um, fear not because at the end of the day, we actually have a specific product that can actually help you upscale your business uh, through Paybiz. And Paybiz, uh, just to just to make this pitch, no, there's no set of fee, there's no monthly fee. It's a very low transaction fee. And again, there's even no sales quota or requirement in the process because again, what we're after is again all of the payment channels that uh, Paynamics actually has in it's actually in 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 its in, in actually um, uh, army of services. Um, we are extending that uh, to Paybiz so that you as a business can be be more empowered in accepting digital forms of payment. No, so um, just to just to show you, these are just channels that you'll be equipped to 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 receive from your customers and uh actually by by next week um paybiz users can also start now accepting credit card uh, forms of payment as well through the paybiz app no so how it works um you can actually have your customers scan the qr code uh, on the tabletop 
or you can actually send uh, payment links to your customers and even actually come with uh, with the web store. No? So all of these features comes with your uh, with a single sign up with Paybiz. Again, there's no setup fee, there's no maintenance fee, and they can easily be downloaded um, uh, via the website, uh, the, uh, by the Apple Store or Google Play. No? So if you are some, if you, this is something that you think that will be very helpful to you as a business, now to start transition from e-commerce to actual e-commerce in the process, you can scan the QR code or go to the link bit.ly slash paybest by MJP. Um, and again, sign up for an account. And again, hopefully we can actually help you in the process in reducing all of those challenges relating to digital payments because you know we, which we intend to make it easier for you because as a business, at the end of the day, um, anything that you can any anything that can can help aid you through technology you know now in terms of the takeaway I think um, as a country cash is still king but but because if we let it know because we have you know, we have actually responsibilities to that as well no? because if there's actually less businesses now parang, for example as much as I'd like to pay via Gcash or PayMy or Shopee Pay for that matter if the merchant themselves or the businesses are unable to receive uh, digital forms of payment of uh, from the customer then how do we expect customers to pay diba so parang it, it, it takes two to tango so it will continue to be king if we actually really let it um and again we we, we should fear not because uh, we're now starting to see because if the usual uh, uh if the usual challenge is also cost no you also have to see it from the perspective that we're now starting to see more players in the space uh, particularly in the digital payment space in the fintech space so in that particular scenario it actually means uh, increased competition means variety of options uh for us no uh, not only for business but also for the consumers and given to where we are there's nowhere else to go but up. And lastly, at the end of the day, we also have to see these types of things to make things simpler, not more complex. And again, as a, as, as, as again, as a technology company like Paynamics, I think these are the kind of, you know, this is the kind of, you know, solution that we, or rather the, the kind of takeaway that we would like to impart with you Now, technology should not be feared, in, you know, and because of, you know, because if it's complicated or among other things, you should see technology as something that an enabling factor, no? Because technology is meant to make things simpler, not more complex. So with that, marami marami salamat sa pagkakataon. Uh, thank you for your time uh, this morning and uh, Crif DNB uh, and DTI uh, e-commerce office. Marami marami salamat as well. Thank you.